This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That wonderful TV year, 1979. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So, I've mentioned in the past that I've collected TV Guide fall preview issues over the years, basically from early teenage years to the point when it became an Entertainment Weekly clone. Yeah, when it got bigger <laughs> than this. Yes. That's when we stopped. Yes, so there's the, uh, there's the 1979 issue. Special issue. And thought it would be fun to talk about which shows made it, which didn't, and which we actually watched. Okay. And I, again, want to give credit to Ken Reed's TV Guidance Counselor podcast for this idea. Mm-hmm. The 1979 fall TV preview had a few hits and many failures, which is generally what happens. Mm -hmm. And we begin with Saturday Night and Working Stiffs on CBS. You'd think this would be a success because it had Jim Belushi and Michael Keaton in it. Right. It's about janitors in an apartment building. Four episodes of the nine episodes actually aired. So somewhere out there, there's either a DVD or... (laughs) <laughs> or sitting yeah. in a vault, the other five episodes of Working Stiffs that never aired. Maybe on YouTube, you never know. It could be, or Hulu, for, for all I know. Now, <laughs> um, I think later on, there, like maybe 20 years later, there was another show called Working Stiffs. Oh, I'm sure there was. That's a very generic Which thing. Which was that... what I thought of when I saw this one. I don't think I ever saw this one. Yeah, it would have been hard to catch because it was only for four weeks. We also had Big Seamus, Little Seamus on CBS, which was a casino detective in New Jersey with a son. And Brian Dennehy was the lead on this. I can tell you I would never have watched that. Uh, Six episodes aired of that. One that did slightly better, Heart to Heart on ABC, because when they met, it was murder. Now, I I was a big Heart to Heart fan. (laughs) Of course, this is Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers, Ran for five seasons. Yes. This was a big hit. And they ended up doing like TV movies of it later. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't been remade. I'm really <laughs> shocked that hasn't been remade at this point. I could see it as a movie with, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Paris on CBS, who leads a team of police detectives. James Earl Jones was the lead. Actually, an early Stephen Bochco production. Wow. And it only lasted 13 episodes? 13 episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then A Man Called Sloan on NBC about a freelance spy. So it's like, hey, you need some spy stuff spy done? for hire. <laughs> Robert Conrad was the, uh, was the lead on this. Lasted 12 episodes. So, yeah, no. I didn't watch that. Moving to Sunday, we have Out of the Blue on ABC about an angel in training assigned to a family with Jimmy Brogan and Dixie Carter, later, of course, to be on Designing Women. Mm-hmm. This was kind of a spinoff of Happy Days. <laughs> and the reason they say kind of is because the same character appeared in an episode the week after the first episode of this aired. So it's more of a cross-promotion than a uh, spinoff. Okay, yeah. But it, it also had a... Mork and Mindy crossover, but it only lasted 13 episodes. They really wanted it to work. <laughs> this apparently. was going to work. Darn yeah. it. They were going to make people watch this, and it didn't happen. A new kind of family on ABC. Two single mothers move in together with their kids. And Rob Lowe was one of the kids? Yep. Oh, he must have been a baby back yeah. then. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. He probably was a teenager, maybe, at that point. With also Eileen Brennan was one of the mothers. The other mother, I didn't even recognize the name. Okay. It was 11 episodes. That's all that lasted. The Associates on ABC, a lawyer sitcom with Wilfred Hyde White, who you know as a much older British actor, Martin Short before he became manic in his acting, and Joe Regalbuto, who would later be on Murphy Brown as the investigative reporter with the, the balding. Okay. James L. Brooks was the creator of this show. It only lasted 13 episodes. Mm. Trapper John M.D. on CBS. This was the MASH spinoff that moved to what was then Current Times. Uh, it's so the it same... was an older, much older Trapper John. Right, who worked 
and basically at this hospital. Yeah. And it was nominated for six Emmys. Uh, Pernell Roberts and Gregory Harrison starred, ran for seven seasons. <laughs> Monday, 240 Robert on ABC about an emergency rescue team. This was not a Jack Webb production, which is what I assumed it was. And it's not the spinoff that Mark Harmon appeared in from Emergency, which <laughs> no. was the pet rescue thing. <laughs> right. it, but it, it does have a, a young Mark Harmon, and Joanna Cassidy ran for 16 episodes. Oh, I have to see if that's available anywhere. Oh, I bet it is somewhere. Uh. Moving to Tuesday, California Fever on CBS about young adults in Southern California which included Lorenzo Lemus. That was probably just a little too early for its time. Yeah, ten, you know? yeah, ten episodes. The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo on NBC, a BJ and the Bear spinoff. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> really? actually, I actually remember that. Yeah, <laughs> starred Claude Akins, ran two seasons. Okay, and there's a reason why I remember that. Yes. Okay, because I had a friend in. If this was like. Yeah, in high school. Yeah. Whose name was Bonnie. It must have been Bonnie Jean or something. Mm -hmm. And my name was Mindy Joe. So yep. we would go by BJ and MJ. Ah. Now she would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, also, my other nickname was, was Grizzly or Grizzly, like the Grizzly Bear because yep. of my last name. Yeah. So BJ and the Bear was like something that was, it's you know. Made for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Moving on to Nobody's Perfect on ABC about a British detective in a San Francisco is a sitcom. It was actually canceled by the time they printed this. Oh it actually gosh. says in there that, you know, uh, as of as of the printing time of this... That's wild! <laughs> as, as we went to press, this show had been canceled. <laughs> but it, it ended up burning it off the next summer for eight episodes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> The Lazarus Syndrome on ABC about a doctor fighting hospital bureaucracy with Louis Gossett Jr., which lasted all of five episodes. Mm -hmm. We have, moving to Wednesday, The Last Resort on CBS, college students working in a hotel kitchen with no one you've ever heard of. <laughs> but it was an early Gary David Goldberg production, who later went on to produce Family Ties, 15 episodes. Struck by lightning on CBS, a teacher inherits a spooky inn and turns out he's Frankenstein's descendant, with Jack Elam as Frankenstein. Was this at, at any point near the Young Frankenstein movie, maybe, or something? Well, it had been several years later. Huh. Well, in any case, five episodes yeah. of that. Did not last very long. Mm -hmm. From Here to Eternity, NBC, a soap based on the 1979 miniseries based on the 1953 movie. Mm -hmm. With William Devane, Kim Basinger, and Don Johnson. You jump. Boy, that should have just taken off. Twelve episodes. Yeah. Thursday, Buck Rogers in the 25th century on NBC. Yes. Gil Gerard in the role he was born to play. With, of course, Aaron Gray and Tim O'Connor. Mm -hmm. 32 episodes. Actually changed concept in the second season. Because it was all on Earth, and then suddenly they were on a spaceship yeah, for the second season. I vaguely remember that. And they changed that. a lot of the cast members. I did watch that. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Wanna dance, Buck? And then we have Benson on ABC. Of course, the soap spinoff mm -hmm. with, with Robert Guillaume and Rene Abergenois. Mm -hmm. And the recently departed James Noble, who just passed away mm -hmm. like last week as, as we taped this. Of course, ran for seven seasons. A huge hit for... For ABC yeah. at the time, it, it really wasn't a lot like soap, though. Was no, it, it was you know, it was much more a conventional, conventional sitcom, sitcom than yeah. it, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Then we move to Friday night, and we have Shirley on NBC, a dramedy vehicle for Shirley Jones about a widow with three kids who moves to a small town. One of the three kids is Roseanne Arquette. It ran for all of fourteen episodes, mm, and probably only lasted that long because of Shirley Jones. Oh, absolutely. Then finally, on Friday night, I shied on NBC about a New York police detective with Joe Don Baker. Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ran all of 13 episodes. Oh. So a lot of shows did not make it, which is what how it always runs. Always runs. But there were a couple that, you know, I actually did watch. I mean, I watched 
Benson a little bit. And heart to heart. Heart to heart. Um, and uh, Buck Rogers. Yeah. So there you sure. go. So, I mean, a few hits out of that. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I think there's better television now. Well, yeah, we're in the platinum age today. <laughs> Peak TV! Too much TV. <laughs> okay. So if you're not watching TV, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Nikki. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>